12 hours, 30 minutes in a week. I mean, for a day. For a we day, call it yeah. long day. Mm -hmm. And you that means you have to work three days yeah. in a week. Mm -hmm. Three whole days in a week. That's, you know, uh, 12 hours, 30 minutes for three for days. Three days. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're seeing my face for the very first time, my name is Ogi, and on this channel, we talk about lifestyle, we talk about immigration. Um, we generally teach you and guide you on how to move abroad. So if this is your first time showing up on this channel, Please kindly subscribe, like, share this video, and stay tuned because we'll be bringing you amazing things that you would enjoy watching. So today, we have um, an amazing person with us today. <laughs> I'll allow her, I'll give her the time to introduce herself. So, the chemistry. Tell us, tell us who you are. Um, my name is Anita Oluakemi Okunowo. Um, I'm just chemistry mm -hmm. to many people. <laughs> Thank you, Oge, for having me on your show. I work in the gastroenterology and liver unit. We we call it glue. Okay. And I've been there for I've been there for a couple of months, like six months or more. Wow. Um, I've had the opportunity of working as a community healthcare assistant. That okay. means um, that entails driving around Cornwall. So when you want to ask me about Cornwall, <laughs> I, think I, can, I can be a tall guy. <laughs> you know about Cornwall. You know about that. Yeah. Thing. So yeah. chemistry, before we dive into what we have today, I've heard a lot about Cornwall. And I heard it's a beautiful yeah. city. Is that true? Mm -hmm. It's a very, very beautiful city. Wow. You come here when you have your money. <laughs> oh my God. It's actually, yeah, it's actually the retirement um, station mm -hmm. and it's a vacation spot. So it's actually not for the um, living-minded. No you have to, yeah, you have to have the door, <laughs> really. Oh, but it's a very, for people who like, um, cool environment serene okay. environment yeah, yeah this is it this is where you belong yes oh that's good that's good one of these days i'll try and come around you should <laughs> you should okay so um chemistry like i always call you and we finally call you um today we'll be talking about um the nhs You've been privileged to work with the uh, with um a care company that is not NHS, and then right now you are working with the NHS. A lot of people have been having challenges with their employers that are not um NHS, and you find out that people are moving in numbers to the NHS, you have this experience already. Can you please give us through some light why people are moving in their numbers to NHS and um, maybe probably leaving some other care companies and feel that NHS is the best place for them? Well, I will say this. Um, I actually tell people, do what works for you, really. Mm -hmm. But um, most of the times here in the UK, we found out that most of these private companies are actually um, playing on people's, um, like taking people for granted, you know, 
not allowing people attain the height they need to attain. And we know that most of we international people, especially Nigerians, we are very hungry for knowledge. We we will we don't like to just limit ourselves. We it's like a, going for a greater height. Yeah. And um, when you think of career progression, then the private sector most times do not work for many of us who want the career progression. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason many of us keep trooping towards the NHS. So I think the number one reason is because of the wider opportunity channels that mm -hmm. you get in the NHS. What do I mean by wider um, um, channels? When you work in NHS, you have quite a lot of wards, a lot of departments, a lot of things that you can do. Yeah, I work in blue, that's the gastroenterology and liver unit. It has to do with all the intestinal enterology system and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes, some people get tired doing one thing for a long time, or you feel you have better skills that actually feel, fit elsewhere. Yeah. So you have the privilege of working with a trust in different departments. You can pick up shifts from any other department. You can choose to go to the maternity. You can choose to go to the mental health field. You can choose to work in planning, plant care. You can choose to go to surgical. You can choose to go to the male wards. You can choose to go to the oncology department. You can choose to go anywhere. So when we talk about vast experience, and even while I'm in glue, there are times when under my, um, what do we call it, agency, the trust has a body um, called Kenoflex. It's okay. like an agency. You actually don't have to go out to pick up your agency shift. Mm -hmm. You pick it there in the trust. You know different words that, because there's an app where you monitor where um, there are several shifts to be picked up. Okay. And you can just say, oh, I would like to know what um, maternity is all about. I would like to know what cancer is all about. I would like to know what um, hematology is all about. And you just pick shifts according to your, um, what do we call it, curiosity. Mm -hmm. And when you pick these shifts, there are times when you get to a word and you say, I think this is what I want. I think this is more in line with my calling. Exactly. There's this room in the NHS that allows you to go for training and development. Okay. Probably they need venipuncture skills. They need um, CPR skills. They need um, you to understand more about skin bundles. They need you to understand more about ECG, bladder scanning, and all that, because those are things we are expected to know how to do, being yeah. an HCA. So you can imagine you saying, oh, okay, I need these skills. I can put in for my learning and development training. You know, mm -hmm. you put in and you will be paid. Oh. You will be paid for every study day you pick. Yes. Wow. So, I mean, that's why would I want to work with them? Yeah, why would I want to work with them? You'll be Why would I want to work with them? Getting that knowledge is it. and at the same time, you are getting paid. knowledge and at the same time, getting paid oh. for learning for bringing in your skills, for trying to sharpen yourself and climb up the, you know, ladder. ladder yeah. So, you know, tell me why I would want to sit with a private company whereby even for them to give you, yeah, I've worked with them and I've seen situations whereby I say, oh, I'm doing this particular course. I'll be writing this exam during this time. Mm. Can you please arrange my annual leave to fall within that time. And they tell you, oh, sorry, during that time, we would be having shortage of staff. We would need you on ground. You're not paying for my professional exams. I'm only asking you to take out of my annual leave, not even my student leave, mm -hmm. annual leave that I have a right to. And you're telling me you will be short staff if you grant it. Not just that. The no, people true. go ahead and tell you that there's a particular time of the year you are not allowed to touch. <laughs> to go for leave. <laughs> Like, what do you mean? It's my time. It's my right. <laughs> what, assuming what you have to do that is so important is during that period, what do they expect you to do? What? 
that's that leads us to another point whole okay. that leads us to another point working with the private sector most times do not afford you the time to plan your life around your family around um you traveling mm -hmm. your hobby your you know your lifestyle you just mm -hmm. find out that you keep living for the work exactly. you imagine i can remember most times you would have to work for like six days in a week and only have one day off terrible but because, yeah, I came in as a team lead. This meant I had a lot of right to so many things mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. But I found that along the line, they, you know, they will give you excuses for you not to be in the office where you're supposed to. You they will give you excuses it. to put you up. on your half days. They call you, please, can you please cover up for so 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 this? And you're like, excuse what? me, it's my half day. <laughs> <laughs> And if, oh if you God. know me very well, mm -hmm. I'm a very disciplined person. Yeah. When it comes to my half day, I do not joke with it. I What I just do is I put my phone on silence, drop it where I wouldn't have a, you know have access to, so and I just nice. take my time off mm -hmm. because it's actually my day off. You have no right to drag me out there again. I've dedicated my whole time. I've worked over time. I've done everything. I deserve the rest. Yeah. Of course, you do. this is why NHS is different. Now, look at this we have our roster, which you have the privilege of having three months before. Like, I know what I'll be doing in December, I know what my time is going to be like in January till <laughs> all the this way till the February. Part I like our NHS. <laughs> That is it. My children's my children's school time has been fixed into my off days. Mm -hmm. Their clinic time, mm -hmm. their you know when they have to be in the surgery. Mm -hmm. We call it surgery there because um, that's how we call our clinics here in the yeah. UK. Yes. You know when they have their appointment and all that have been allocated into my roster. I only have to work thirteen days in a month. Thirteen days. That's mm -hmm. all. That's your fixed time in the wow. NHS. And the you do not work more than you work 13 days and you end mm -hmm. up earning the same or, or, or a bit higher than the people working themselves out, burning out. themselves out completely. Ooh. Yes, I quite agree that NHS is not paying like I, 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 mm -hmm. like some people would want to draw you like the mm -hmm. like some of the agencies and all that. But mm -hmm. it's quite okay because your contract is 37.5 hours mm -hmm. in a week. Mm -hmm. This means you have to work 12 hours, 30 days during a, I mean, 12 hours, 30 minutes in a week. I mean, for a day, for a we day, call it yeah. long day. Mm -hmm. And you that means you have to work three days yeah. in a week. Mm -hmm. Three whole days in a week. That's, you know, uh, 12 hours, 30 minutes for three for days. Two days. Then you do that for three consecutive weeks, three weeks in a month. Mm -hmm. Then the last week will be the four days calendar. Okay. Which makes it, yes, three plus three plus three plus four makes it 13 days that you'll be working in a month. In a now, month. look at it. Break it up. Yes. For men, that gives you opportunity Let's to do... Let's say the month is 30, 13 days. 13 minus 13 yes. days. Oh, my God. 13. Goodness. So you have, you have like 17 days to yourself. A lot of you have 17 days. days to do anything. You can pick up shifts if you, if you are not the type that, like, we have a principal in my house. My husband will tell me, let me pick the extra sheets. You sit down at home. You, say, See, you, that, you are like jelly. Just yeah. sit down. <laughs> After your normal shift, just sit down. Let me pick the extra shift. Then we have enough time with the kids. Yeah. Because already you're taking them out of their comfort zone mm -hmm. where they get to spend time with their grandparents, uncles, Mm -hmm. And since you also hold the, as much as many of us are doing this for them, but we also hold them the right to give them that balanced life. Of course. And that is, I, I must tell you, that is one of the reasons I ran into NHS. So I could have that time around my family time, you know, that time to fix in for the family. 
That way your husband can work, you can work conveniently, and imagine two people bringing the money together to make the family balanced. You don't have to struggle for time, you don't have to struggle for child care, you don't have to struggle for, you know, yeah. whatever that we used, to, we used to struggle for there when I was with a private right. company. So when we talk about that, we know, yes, um, um, the NHS has this um, work-life balance. That because I actually also choose to say, oh, um, I want just night shifts. You can say, oh, I'm not, I'm not the night type. Please, can you make my shifts just day shifts? You can say, oh, this time of the day, I don't usually get bus from my house, or I don't, I wouldn't be able to make it to work. Okay. Can we make my work? Um, can I resume by nine and close by nine? You know, so you have this flexible time mm. to plan with your manager, depending on your manager. There are some managers that would just sit there and do it for you and all that, but you have that right in the NHS generally to pick your flexible shifts. So, so this is what works for me, and this is how I want my most um, private. So, Kevin, are you saying that, let's say you prefer night shift, maybe because of child care, you can just tell um, whoever your manager is that you want night shift and it will be granted. Yes, yes. We let me tell you something. We had this document from time to time when the trust comes up with different policies, mm -hmm. they pass out the policy, they pass it around to you so you can read and sign yeah. that yes, I know this exists. Mm -hmm. And an example is this particular flexible shift policy in the N NHS. Mm -hmm. They pass it around everybody so you okay. can see and sign. That yes, I know that I have a right to choose my flexible time. So yes, you have a right to choose what works for you. You have a right to tell your um, manager, this is how I want it. And yes, they would, they would allow you to choose what works for you. Nobody, nobody have the right to enforce you to do anything. Ha. Nobody. <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. And um, you see? <laughs> sure, sure. um NHS, NHS, they are they are really doing well, especially when it comes to treating their employers' rights. And I know that there are still private firms out mm -hmm. there that are okay, that um their managers are doing well because if I must say. This this thing most times depends on um the individuals involved. There are still some NHS trusts. Um, depending on the manager mm -hmm. that you are under, the managers make life miserable for you. I've heard where someone is also complaining a bitterly yes. about where the manager is frustrating her efforts. You understand. So, um, it's, mm -hmm. it's more like yes. it's more like praying to uh, meet um, an amazing person wherever you are working. But the thing is, the system always helps. The system well, is number one thing because NHS has made it in such a way that it's a big body. If this person is um, messing your mental health up. There's someone else you can also talk to. The other person is not um, the only person that has a family yeah. to say. You understand? But when it comes to private firm, one person mm -hmm. has the final. Yes. Um, one person can decide what will happen to your career and yes. your life on that job. <laughs> so <laughs> so exactly. that's it. That's just it. Exactly. <laughs> that's it like um, I always say in the NHS all you need to do is to know how to do 
email correspondence. Good. Have a correspondence mm -hmm. for everything you request, but don't make it oral. Make out this email correspondence between yourself and your manager. Mm -hmm. So when you have to prove anything, you have formal emails to prove and back up your points. Yeah. And the fact is, you can actually decide to go to another word. Sure. It, and it makes it easier. You can easier. put in your, um when you see any vacancy anywhere, you can put in your TV and it makes it easier. You just move without any problem, without any, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I think um there is no way you cannot meet all these, um when we talk about racism, mm -hmm. there is no way you cannot meet up with that factor. No place to be candid. There's no place you cannot, you know, um, meet it. Like I, would, and that's why I said in the beginning of this um, um, talk show, I said, okay, do what works for you. Yeah. If you are privileged to work with a friend where you you find everything you love, um, everything is working out for you. The mm -hmm. respect you know, you're growing like you want to. Mm -hmm. Then no problem. Stick with that. There's no reason for you to say, oh, I want to rush to NHS because people are rushing to NHS. You mm -hmm. do not need to do that. Mm -hmm. But when you think, oh, these are the things I want. I don't find it where I am. Mm -hmm. I think I should make a move. Then yes, please make a move. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And um, just like now, let's talk about the holidays too. Just like you mentioned, I think about, it's a very um, interesting. Yeah, it's a very interesting part. You mentioned about um, email correspondence. Um, I would also want to say the email correspondence thing is one thing anybody shouldn't miss in the United Kingdom. Wherever you are working, especially when mm -hmm. it has to do with. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's care. very important. Or whichever job that comes with any kind of risk or where you would like to prove yourself, email correspondence is very important. Mm -hmm. Because even if you're in private firm, it's still that email. It's very that important. Very key. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, uh, let's talk even about... Even when the it. union steps in, they need enough evidence. Mm -hmm. They need to see things you've done. Yeah. So, yeah, even with the union, if union is going to stand up for you, they need you to have that backup. They need to see those things you've done. They need to see those evidences you've been able to put together over time before you can make a claim. So, yes, email would always do that for you. And nobody can go and mess up with the email like unlike whatsapp you know you can have the disappearing messages and all that and you wouldn't be able to go back to the message um the emails is consent then you have it you have all your proof yeah it's very important so yeah we were going to talk about the leave the holidays i joined i think i joined sometime in may yeah may 2023 <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and I must say, when I started choosing my holidays, oh. <laughs> oh my you know, goodness. my manager was like, Henny, I think you need to pick up your holidays. Let me know your schedule. Let me do this. Let me do that peak. And I went to my annual leave um, platform. Mm -hmm. And I found out that I actually had six weeks and one day. Six weeks, six weeks and, one. and one day to schedule, which I had to spread out. Oh. Six weeks and one day. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I've had two. I've had two weeks, and I'm waiting for the remaining four weeks, which I've split into two. Mm. Four weeks and one day. Now I've splitted it into two, and I'm like, wow, oh, is this how it is? And you know, you put it in only when you have an exceptional rule, like you know, you you tend to see the percentage of people who have put in for leave in your ward, and you know the percentage that um because I didn't I didn't get to put to, um, to choose my leave period 
in the right time or at the right time rather so i had to look into okay i have this time i have this time and i put it in well and she approved it wow. she approved it there is nobody telling me oh you see you won't be able to take this leave because um we need you to do this or because and so 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 we can actually pay you for your leave we can no no nobody is telling me that i've been able to choose my leave and I will be going for my leave as I deem fit because it's my right. And that's another thing in NHS. You have the study leave, you have the sick leave, you have your annual leave, which you can take when you want them. And you know, it, um, because they feel the job is taking so much emotional, um, yeah. um, how do we call it now? So much from you emotionally. Exactly. So they believe there should be a balance. There should be a time you would, take off work and when you come back they see that yeah they tell you oh you look refreshed you look and truly you would feel it yourself mm -hmm. you will feel vibrant you will feel like oh come on bring it up i think i can face anything after having a break it's really really gets to do you a lot of good yeah a lot of good it physically really mentally financially <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yes oh yes and um they work out for your emotion for your mental health i can remember the first month i started with them there was this patient that i bonded with so much and we lost him we oh. lost him it was it was terrible and i was one of those people that were chosen to you know clean the person up and get the person ready for the mug yeah I I I I thought I was strong. End I was there. Point. I was doing all yeah. like I was asked to do and all that. Mm -hmm. Then when I stepped out of the world, um, I just saw my matron. I saw my manager. I saw my deputy um, sister. The the three of them approached me and they were like, "Henny, we would like to have a chat with you." And I was like, "Uh huh. What have I done? Why are these three top people coming to?" Mm -hmm. then when they pulled me aside they were like um mary called our attention to the fact that you're not okay we've lost mr hey and we know how much that means that meant to you mm -hmm. blah 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 mm -hmm. and you know i i wanted to put up a front but while they were talking they were taking turns to talk and all that i just you know mm -hmm. i had to let it go Oh. I cried so much. I let it out. Oh, good, no. <laughs> I mean, that was my first time of seeing someone pass right in front of me. Oh. So, and this was somebody that I bonded with so much. You know, every time I was on the ward, people would come me, oh, come see Mr. Hey, he had stuff mm -hmm. you just now and all that. And so we had that relationship and you know, all, and suddenly it was no more. Mm. So definitely they knew something was wrong. Something was wrong somewhere with me they had that talk i was able to cry i was able to you know let it out and they gave me one hour break they said you know what take your pause get out of the world go take some fresh air exactly. take a drink take a walk come in after an hour that was that was outside my break Imagine. that was outside my break yes so yes your mental health matters to them unlike any other place because i've had the opportunity to work elsewhere yeah. so i'm talking from my own Experience. point of view i it might not be the same with yeah That's it might not be the same the right with other for this discussion <laughs> <laughs> you've tested them here and there <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I've I've been a support worker too. Mm -hmm. I do that on my part time, you know, when I feel oh, see, I'm bored of see, I'm bored staying home and all that. I want to go out. I can just pick up shifts. And so I can see I've tasted different things. Mm -hmm. I've I've tried my hands on care homes, support work, NHS, mm -hmm. um um domiciliary mm -hmm. and all that so i yeah i like i would always tell everybody when you say talk about this i know about this i know about that i know about that and i know what works for me and i think mm -hmm. that is what everybody have a right to do mm -hmm. try out different things and try to see what works for you and stick by that thing that works for you nhs might not be that thing that works for someone Some else it might work for me it might not work for you yeah you just have to know what works for you exactly mm -hmm. exactly so mm -hmm. what um 
what have you got to say about standing and walking for 12, 12 hours, 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> my dear. Oh my God. 12 good hours, 30 minutes. Please, mm -hmm. what have you got to say about that? Because I, I'm always scared whenever. <laughs> At the mention of these long hours. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. But I must tell you, it's not a kid's play. Hmm. Having to stand for that long is not something that I was that I was comfortable with. Because um anybody that I'm sure many people that would watch this particular video will say, What? <laughs> Kemi can never stand for two hours. <laughs> Nothing prepared you for this journey. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I, and I think that is what many people, because I can remember when I told a friend of mine, he, we've been friends for like 15 years now, yes. Mm -hmm. And he told me, Kemi, are you sure NHS is what you want? I said, why? He said, ah, I know you, you're soft. You're soft. Any little thing, I'm tired. <laughs> Like you would have to stand for long. Mm. And it was like, you drive around, you see a client 30 minutes, you hop back into your car and, you know, you sit while driving. Mm -hmm. And before you get to the next place, you, you are kind of um, refreshed enough to mm -hmm. see the next person. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that is better for you. And I said, don't worry. I, I will do it. I will do that. And I can remember my, my, <laughs> my lovely sister, Ayaba, when um her name is Ayaba, we call her Ayaba. Yeah. When she, you know, she was so concerned. Yeah, she she actually she is one of those people that actually she I would even say she is the person who pushed me into this NHS like like sis, mm -hmm. I know what you can do. Mm -hmm. I you are so professional and I think this is for you. Yeah. So she she even went for the interview with me. We all went, you know, she she's been that that support and she said okay, I have something for you. She got me this, um, what do they call it? Um, this thing we wear for back pain and okay, all that. Okay, um, yeah, with yeah. trainer. With trainer. <laughs> There's yeah. also yeah. one she got the for, back for posture. Yes, to, be to sure give you that right posture um, to help you. Easy. And yeah, it's really, I'm really telling you what can help people. Yeah. And then getting the right type of shoe exactly the, it's quite expensive but the right type of sneakers can help you mm -hmm. so i think i was equipped enough and after one month i was like oh i don't need this i think uh, for the first two weeks i thought i was going to faint every time i had to stand for like one hour mm -hmm. um my manager my former manager noticed this i would always pull a um particular stool there is this um um, how do we put it? Official stool that mm -hmm. you can control to any height and all that. I would just push it to myself and sit at every opportunity I had. And he had to call me like everyone called my attention to the fact that you keep sitting. Then I said, Well, if I'm not doing anything, I think I can sit. Of course, <laughs> of course. If you're not doing anything, you can sit. Oh, it's not no. easy. I know. <laughs> I know. Why does not work with the NHS? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's actually no time oh. they believe you have nothing to do. Exactly. If you are yeah, if you are not taking care of the personal care, if you are not doing personal care, you have skin bonders to do, mm -hmm. you have the food and flip chat to attend to, mm -hmm. you have probably samples to collect and send to the laboratory, <laughs> you have care rounds Even to do. You have for 48 hours, there's something to do with the NHS. There's something there to do in the NHS. Fact, there are people on the list waiting to come in. So, you can't say there's As you are discarding do. someone, and Another you have like some, oh. some set of other people wanting to come in. Sometimes you have people on the corridor yeah. waiting to come in. Yeah, you That's have people true. waiting on the corridor mm -hmm. on their beds. You have people in the ambulance. Oh, we, you have several ambulances outside mm -hmm. waiting with patients to come into different... And because this is UK, Blue is one of the major departments or what where you admit different people ev at every point in time because you get to have liver problem, you get people with um, 
kidney problems, you get a lot of problems. So it's a very crazy world where you always have one thing or the other. You have thousands of things to do at the same time. So it, it, when, when you're sitting, the question is, are you really doing anything? That's the question. Are you really doing anything? And, you know, well, with time, we've adjusted of and course. we are enjoying it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps getting, yeah. everything keeps getting better with time that's just it does, it does. especially yeah. especially to people that just joined newly that that became carers nurses doctors all the care workers it will oh, definitely oh. seem like it's a terrible mm -hmm. thing but with time, yeah. you see yourself yeah. adjusting. You see yourself fitting in. And before you know it, you don't even feel it anymore. You don't even anymore. feel it anymore. You, you just see mm -hmm. it's a normal thing. Let me go and do my normal job. And you, yeah. are, and you see yourself <laughs> picking extra sheets to do that standard. Exactly. You know, exactly. <laughs> It's crazy because when I started, I told my friend who I started with, like, I'm sure I can never pick extra shifts. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sure that can never happen to me. But now yeah, I see are. myself picking I one see. or two. <laughs> yeah, one or two sometimes. But because of the agreement I have with my home partner, like, yeah. no, this is it. You cannot choose. When I choose one or two, I tell, I think the first person I always call is Ayaba. There's this sister of mine, I call her Ayaba every time. I will just call her, hello, you know what? I'm going up. I, I don't want to tell your brother this on the phone, but I'll pick the shit. What the fuck? Oh my God. And I will not do it over the phone. Mm -hmm. I will get him and I will say, you know, we will be in the good mood and I will say, you know what? I actually found something interesting and I thought, okay, let me give it a try. And he will be like, mm -hmm. what have you done this time? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so I think you, you keep getting better. Mm -hmm. You keep getting better on the job. You keep getting hungry for more knowledge. Mm. You, you keep getting hungry because it's a place where you have so many opportunities, so many that you want to explore all the different fields in healthcare. Imagine, I told I told someone who is actually an IT professional, like if you want to fly in IT world, I, the NHS is for you. Mm. The only thing you need to do first is come in first as the HCA. And you, you know, in no time, you keep going to the IT department to see if there's any vacancy. Once there's any vacancy, it's a face they always see. It's a face probably you always volunteer one or two hours. Mm -hmm. And the first person they are thinking of is you. Mm -hmm. Oh, have you seen this opening? Forget it. We don't do anything by, oh, I know you here in the UK. Like I've always said it, it's always a process. Mm -hmm. They will tell you, have you put in for the job? This is the link. Yes. You put in, you no, go for the interview. But it. You must put in something. You need to apply. You have to put in. Yeah, you have to apply. Nobody will say, oh, we know you. you come know on, you come are. in. No, it's, it's not, not automatic. Mm -hmm. No, it's not automatic. The you have to come in. But because they will give you the information. Go and apply. Go there, apply. That's why you are part of you will, know, you will know when the opportunity comes exactly. up. That's that's the edge you have. You exactly. will know. And, you know, your name is already known. They know your ability. Mm. So during the interview, you know what to say. You know the right things to say. You know, because you've been you've been there. You've been yeah, volunteering. So it's already. quite easy. Mm -hmm. You're in the system already. So you imagine them moving into the IT field and being sponsored. Moving into the HR field, being sponsored, still in the same healthcare um, sector yes. because in every every sector in the every field in the um, health sector is actually health. Yeah, health, and so many people are needed. So it's just for you to be there at the right time and to put in at the right time, and you know you keep flying. So yeah, that's that's another thing about NHS. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful place to work. 
Yeah, yeah. Really. Yes, I agree. I agree. NHS, they are really doing um a great job. They are, especially yeah. when it comes yeah. to managing their staff. Because there's one thing I always say: you can't claim to be uh to be a care company, but you don't know how to care for your own staff. This is one thing some hmm. people do that sounds so funny to me. You care for people. These carers go out there to care for um, the vulnerable ones. And they are not being mm -hmm. cared for. It doesn't make sense. Oh, they are even made vulnerable themselves. That's it. They are made That's vulnerable it. themselves. It doesn't make By who? It By the person who has, who has employed them. That's it. You find out that many of these employers make their employees vulnerable. Oh. And they don't care. I've, 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 I've seen a situation whereby a colleague of mine mm -hmm. fell sick mm -hmm. in a service user's house, you know, fell sick to the ex extent of slumming. And the office was called. Uh -huh. And, you know, they were like, oh, give us a minute. She has, and when they called herself, they were like, I'm sure you can manage. Please, you still have to catch up with these other people. The other service users are waiting for you. And when I got wind of it, I called. I called them. I said, are you saying nobody from the office can go to help her mm -hmm. out of the service user's house? How are you painting the company in itself? You're not giving the company a reputable name. Mm -hmm. That means you don't care about your workers. And at that point, so many, so many messages were sent to the service user. She went straight to the house where this, this person was, you know, um, helpless. I called the doctor, the GP, and, you know, I had to take charge. I'm a team leader, and I have to play the role. Here is one of my people lying there helplessly, and you want to enforce her to keep going on, working, telling her, oh, I'm, I'm sure you're strong enough to please manage with the morning runs. Huh, no. How can, can you walk where you are not? That you? happened. That, that actually happened. Oh, so I had to go there. I had to help. And after I got, you know, after I got the person out of the place, they had to send someone from the office to come. That was when they sent someone to come help. So you imagine if I if I wasn't a figure of help at that particular time. Exactly. As imagine what could have happened. Observe that this is what is meant to be done. Oh, yes. my goodness. That's, that's yes. just my, that's one of my challenges not caring mm -hmm. for people that care for others. Because, mm -hmm. for goodness sake, these people are caring for the vulnerable ones. They should also mm -hmm. be cared for. Because if for any reason they are not able to discharge their duties, that means there won't be nobody to care for the vulnerable ones. So they still need the care. They need the love they can get. They need to be happy with the job they are doing. And it's mm -hmm. also very important that the employers make the environment conducive and also make the, the people doing the job feel at home, feel, as in see the job like it's something to be enjoyed rather than making, mm -hmm. uh, making the job look so stressful or making it hostile, sort of. So it's even stressful. It's stressful job, enough. It's stressful. We know that. It's but stressful enough. enough not to talk of enough. other factors coming in. That's it. When we oh. have their small, small orishi orishi on top, then the stress increases. <laughs> uh -uh, it increases, bro. It increases. <laughs> A lot of people have gone through this, and it's really not funny. It's really not mm -hmm. funny at all. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just hope that um, something needs to be done. I, I hope employers learn with time to find a way of making their, their staff feel at home and um, feel um, cared for. Because it's a different thing when you know that you're working and you are being cared for, that your employer has you at heart. But then <laughs> most of the things, yeah, so... Um, the most important thing is uh, knowing where you want to work. 
and knowing just like you said what works for you because you might you can check your situation and know that no nhs is not for me and then you check yours and see hey nhs is where i need to run to you understand because a lot of people have seen Shege. Some people will say, I've seen Shege. Some, Shege. Even, some people have even seen Shege. Banza. And Top Shege Pro Max. You understand? <laughs> no, that's just it. Let's be frank. Some people have seen Shege. Some they see Shege Banza. Some Shege Pro Max. All of them join together. Join together. They drop out. Check them now. So if you are not comfortable, and you feel that this is the place that will give you peace. This is mm -hmm. the place that will bring out the best in you. This is the place that if I am here, I will discharge my duty diligently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This yes. is also a yes. place that where I, if I'm here, I will not enter into any wahala because there are some places that when you are there, you will be running from trouble. But trouble will be like this, following you up and down. Especially, you know, this job is not an easy one. It's it, it comes with a lot of risk. You have to be careful to, to avoid any kind of trouble. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you need to choose your trouble wisely. That's it. <laughs> That's just it. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. thank you for having me. I'm so thank you. glad. My pleasure. I'm so glad you showed up. Thank you. Oh, you you are oh, people that checking if they are moving, if, if they are going to join this crowd and move to the NHS. <laughs> I know by now they are convinced. They are convinced that yeah, yeah. NHS is for them. So guys, stick to this channel. Um, watch my videos because these ones will be dropping very soon. Thank you so much, Kemi, for coming. You're welcome. Kemi Street. No worries. <laughs> I'm glad we had you today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So guys, subscribe to my channel, like, share this video to your friends and family, and see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>